All right, everyone, sorry for the late post, but finally getting this done. All right, so tonight's homework, number four for chapter six, number 38, the perimeter of a triangle is 31. Sides one and two have equal lengths, while size number three have, is one centimeter shorter than twice the length of side one. Determine how long each side is by completing parts A through C. Right, and homework help or Homework help right here. <laughs> okay, so let X represent the length of side one. What essential part of this statement, let statement is missing, right? So we still have <clears throat> uh, let X represent side two and let, um, what was it? What does it say up here? Okay, so yeah. So we have to say let, so there's already let X represent the length of side one. Okay. We also need let x also represent the length of side number two. Okay, we know that, and we know that it's x for side one and x for side two. Because up here, they say psi 1 and psi 2 have equal lengths. Right? So they're the same, which means that they're both going to be an unknown x. Right? While we're also missing let. Right? And, and psi 3. Right? So whatever I'm doing, I'm going to have, it's going to be side number 3. But psi 3 is 1 centimeter shorter than twice the length of psi 1. So if psi 1 is x, then psi 3 is going to be twice the length, so it would be 2x, and then 1 centimeter shorter means minus 1. So that is going to be psi 3. So let 2x minus 1 represent the length of side number three, all right? So that's what we're missing. <clears throat> okay, write a mathematical sentence that states that the sum of the three sides equals the perimeter, which is 31, all right? So we have the side one, all right? So in order to get this, we need side one, side number one, okay, plus, Side number two, and they're both the same, so that's why I put them both in red, plus side number three, and this one I put in blue. And that total is going to make 31. Okay. And we know that side one... Okay, so if you need a positive, pause it. But we know that side one is x. We have it right there. So side one is x. And we know side two is also x. We wrote it right there. Right? So here's side one, here's side two, and here's side three right here. Right? And then so side one plus side two plus side three. I'm going to go ahead and erase side three. And side three is 2x minus one. That's going to make 31. Okay. So that's your mathematical sentence. Solve the equation you found on part B and determine the length of each side. All right. So if we have x plus x, we get 2x plus 2x minus 1. That's going to equal 31. Okay. Now we're going to keep working on this. 2x plus 2x makes 4x minus 1 equals 31. Okay. Just like what we did in class, I'm going to keep us going and keep solving for x. So we're going to go ahead and add 1. So, so this will... 
cancel out and we will get 4x equals 31 plus 1 is 32. Okay, keep working. I'm going to go ahead and divide it by 4. It's going to cancel out. And all you got to do is figure out what x is equal to 32 divided by 4. Take a moment and use a calculator if you have to. If you know your times table, it's 8. All right, so that means that psi 1, right, psi 1 up here, right, psi 1, psi 1 is x, which means that it's 8, right? So psi 1 is 8. Psi 2, right here. Also x, that means that it's also 8. So psi 1 is 8. Psi 2 is 8. Psi 3 is 2x minus 1. And then again, remember what we just found? We just found out that x was 8. Right, right here. So x is 8. So psi 3 is 2 times 8 which is 16 minus 1. So 16 minus 1 is 15. So psi 1 is 8, psi 2 is 8, and psi 3 is 15. Okay? So you can write down psi number 1 equals 8. I think that's in centimeters, right? Uh, yep. So 8 centimeters. Psi 2 also 8 centimeters and side number 3 is and we just found out that up there was 15 centimeters all right pause it if you need a second to think about it okay next one when miss shrivel I think that's how you say it. Solve an equation class. She checked her solution and it did not make the equation true. Examine her work below and, fin and find her mistake. Then find the correct answer. All right, so looking through here, looks like I'm going to take 5 and multiply it to the 2x, which makes 10x. So, so far, so good. Then I'm going to take the 5 and multiply it into the negative 1. So 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. So far, so good. Then it looks like we just copy this part down. Yep. And copy the rest down. Yep. Okay. So step one and step two is good. So I'm going to go ahead and, and check it off. So step one is the beginning. So that's fine. Step two is fine because we just checked it. So now we're going to check step three. So it looks like. Let's see what happened in step three. Let's see. So 7x, that looks like 10x minus 3x. So that makes 7x. That's fine. And then it looks like they just copy the 5, the minus 5 down. And it looks like they just copy the rest of it, right, which is all right there. So step 3 is also good. Okay, let's look at step 4. Looks like 12x. Let's see. Hmm, the only way to get x on this side, on the left-hand side, is to take this 5x and to subtract 5x to cancel. But 7x minus 5x is supposed to be 2x. And I think they added 7 and 5. So 7x and 5x, that's how they get 12. But it's supposed to be 7x minus 5x. So step 4 is where it went wrong. Okay? So... Now we know, okay? So which means that we are not going to use any of this stuff down here. Okay, so let's do it right. So 7x, and then if I go minus 5x, minus 5x, these will cancel. And you get 7x minus 5x, which makes 2x. Copy minus 5. 
and copy the equal and copy the positive nine. All right, so so far, this one was, should be good. Okay, and now gonna keep going, finish it off. I'm gonna go ahead and add five. All right, and it looks like they got they got four. You see it underneath here? Looks like they got four by doing nine take away five, but it should actually be nine plus five, like how I have it here. So they did nine take away five, that's how they got four. And that's also wrong, okay? So they should have done nine plus five, right? And these cancel, so you get two X. Nine plus five is 14. Keep going here, and then we're gonna go ahead and divide it by two. And these right here will cancel. And we get x equals 14 divided by 2. If you need a minute, pause it. If you want to do it yourself, but 14 divided by 2 is 7. Okay, so that's your final answer. So each, this step is correct, and now we have our final answer. x equals 7. All right, what did they have before? They had x equals 1 third, right? So they were definitely off. Okay, and the last one. For, for the sequence 5, 25, 125, 625, what kind of sequence is it? So remember, we've only talked about two types of sequence. We have arithmetic. That's if we're adding the same thing each time. So if we're going from 5 to 25, so what do we add or subtract? Well, we're adding 20. And subtraction is the same as adding, except subtraction is adding a negative. So if the, I say this is arithmetic, Okay, don't write this down yet. That means we're adding the same thing each time. So that means from 5 to 25 is plus 20. And then that means that from 25 to 125 should also be plus 20. But it's not. All right, 25 to 125 is actually plus 100. So we know it's not plus 20 every single time, which means that this is not arithmetic because we're not adding the same thing each time. So now we have to see if it's the other sequence, which is called geometric. Okay, geometric is when you're multiplying, and you can say dividing too, because dividing is multiplying by a fraction. So am I multiplying the same thing each time? So from five to 25, what do I have to do? Well, I have to multiply by five, right? And how about, 25 to 125. Am I multiplying by 5 also? I don't know. Let's look. Let me open up my calculator. Oh, my calculator is super slow. Oh, something happened to it. <laughs> Tom Brady. Okay. Why is this so slow? Okay. So let's try five times five is 25, and then 25 times five is 125. So it looks like it works out. So 25 times five. And usually I don't like to use x5, but since we don't have any x's in here, um, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so it looks like it works out. All right, and if I keep doing it, so 125 times 5 is 625. All right, so that means that this pattern does work. I do have to get it. I just keep multiplying it by 5. Okay. Okay, so it is geometric because we're multiplying by five. Okay, this is asking what is the fifth term, All right? So this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and fifth term is the one after 625. So we can go 625 times five, but in my calculator, I already have the pattern going, so I just have to hit enter, and that will give me the next one, 3,125. That is the next term. So the fifth term is... And we'll write it down as A5 equals 3,125. Okay. 
write an explicit equation for this sequence. Right, so remember to write an explicit equation. Okay, we can write it as t of n, or you can write it as, n, as y if you want. Okay, t of n equals. Right, so <clears throat> well, what's going on is that our pattern is times 5, times 5, times 5, times 5, times 5, and it's going to keep going. So it's going to utilize the 5. Okay. <clears throat> And because it's geometric, it's me. Every time you times it by five, if you're multiplying it by multiple fives, you're actually doing it a power of five. So, so or excuse me, a, a base of five. So it'd be five to the nth power, like that. <clears throat> okay. Now, we also need the first term, or the term that sits right here. Okay. Not the first term, the zero term. So for the, for that to happen, we got to go backwards. Okay, we got to go backwards to find the zero term, right? And if we're multiplying five by five to get to the next term, multiply by five, multiply by five, if we wanna go backwards, we have to actually divide by five. So we have to look at five, Ooh, that's ugly, sorry. We have to look at five and we have to divide it by five. So five divided by five, what does that make? That, makes a big fat one all right so the zero term is one so all we need is to put a one right here okay and that's our pattern our pattern is one times five to the n power or because it's one you don't have to write it down so our, you can you can write it as just five to the nth power Okay, and that's what t of n is. And remember, we want to write it this way because if we can figure out this explicit equation, we can figure out, you know, t to the, you know, maybe the 13th term, right? So if I kept multiply by 5, multiply by 5, multiply by 5, if I do this for 13 times, all I have to do is just go 5 to the 13th power, and that's the equation for it. This is going to be a big number. But I can do it 5 to the power 13. Yeah, that's a big number. Okay? That's if I keep multiplying it by 5 each time. All right, everyone. That is a wrap. See you tomorrow.